Dr. Chama, um, margins, uh, they came off a bit. Uh, you had mentioned last quarter that uh, the solvent price stress was evident in quarter one. You were not sure if it's last for the whole of quarter two or no. Did it last for the whole of quarter two? And what else, if anything, led to this sequential? I'm saying quarter on quarter uh, come off in margins from 29.5 to 28.5. It's not a very sharp drop, but I'm just trying to understand the nuts and bolts here. I will say that is deliverage in ARV API capacity utilization. So when you are selling less of formulations, we use less of API capacity as well. So there was a deliverage in our uh, ARV segment that led to the uh, decline in overall margins. Okay, but I also I think I read and please please excuse me if I'm wrong. I think I read that you would probably do 30% average for FY23. Now that would mean that after 29 half and 28 half in Q1 and Q2, you will need to do much better than the 30% average in Q3 and quarter four. You reckon that is a strong possibility? Yes. Well, we we'll see uh, as always uh, uh, giving indication uh, to our shareholders and our st other stakeholders. Uh, our EBITDA will be around 30%. I'm not saying 30.00. I'm always saying around 30%. But we're very confident when we're saying. So um, it is not a flat 30.00%. But we, we, we have the ability to uh, do better than the Q2 in Q3. Yeah. Yeah. No, Dr. Chah, please excuse me for us probing this a bit more simply because I think where people would want to understand is because the tax rates have moved up in the last couple of quarters. And if indeed the margins don't reach 30 or slightly about 30 or thereabouts, then the overall numbers at the bottom line uh, get reduced that much, and which is why uh, this inquisitiveness. But okay, you still believe that uh, closer to 30, circa 30% average for FY23 is still a distinct possibility. Yes, absolutely. As, as things stand. Uh, yeah, yeah. 